back to Red Glasses Talk. The title today is Be Priority Driven. So we're in a series on being a priority driven person, and we're going to continue that today. Matthew 22, 37 to 39 gives us the Lord's biblical priorities for living. The scripture says in Matthew 22, verse 37, love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul, with all your mind. That's what Jesus said. He said, that's first. That's number one. Then he said, and the second commandment is likened to the first, love your neighbor, love your neighbor as you love yourself. So as you look in the scripture and talk about who's our neighbor, everyone obviously needs to be somebody we have some respect for, care for, we need to reach out to and help or whatever when those opportunities arise. But the first neighbor, priority-wise, I think the scripture points to that we need to make sure we have right relationships with are other people that are followers of Jesus, Christians, disciples, followers of Jesus. So that's what we're going to look at today, and we've been, we took a peek at it last week. So remember, priority number one is your personal commitment to Jesus Christ. Priority two is your personal commitment to loving yourself. Now, don't forget, we say this almost every week. In terms of loving yourself, you will only love others to the degree you love yourself. And you'll only love yourself to the degree you know how much God loves you. He said, you're my masterpiece, Ephesians 2.10. He said, I love you no matter what. I've created you. I've got a plan for your life. My son came to live and die and rise from the dead for you. What else do I need to, to, do, to do to convince you that you matter and you matter to him? You matter to the Lord. We need to understand that is absolutely critical to, to get into our hearts and lives. Priority number three, it's a personal progressive commitment to the followers, other followers of Jesus. So when these followers of Jesus band together, get together, meet together. They call that the church, the body of Christ, the family of God, and there are different titles. But it's, but it's simply, yet profoundly, other Christians meeting together to, to worship, to grow, to develop, and to build solid relationships with one another. So the question is, what is the prerequisite for being in the body of Christ. What is the, the number one prerequisite? The answer is all those who have made a commitment to Jesus Christ, priority number one, are automatically then in the body of Christ. Now, you say, well, I, I don't follow Jesus. I don't claim to be a Christian. And I go to church. I'm checking it out. I went to a wedding or a funeral there. Or I go okay, on Christmas and Easter. No, that doesn't mean you can't go there and you can get to know people there. And that's great. But to be a part of the body of Christ, not that church building. Remember, a couple weeks ago I said, the church is people, it's not a building. But to be a part of that body, that family of God, the church, you've got to have Jesus in your life. And so that's the key question. You've got to be... Continually ask yourself, is he in me? Why? So then why is the body of Christ, the family of God, the local church, and the church all over the world, why is that so important? It's important because Jesus said, as we read last week, in John 17, verses 20 to 23, you might want to go back and read that. He said, I pray that all the believers, wherever they are, wherever they uh, meet together in whatever form or fashion, that they be one, that their relationships be right, so that non-Christians, non-church people can see the kind of relation you have with other Christians and be drawn to him through you. So that we get our relationships right with people is critical, especially other believers. So the question is, what are the overall responsibilities of a person who is in the body of Christ or the family of God? I'm going to give you a whole list here, and then you can look each one of these up. But this is a magnificent list. I think in the Bible there are over 40 
uh, a specific, uh, uh, what I call one another passages, where it says, do this in relationship to other believers, with one another. So let me read them through, and you can look them up. Uh, first of all, suffering together. 1 Corinthians 12, 26. Rejoicing together. Romans 12, 15. Carrying each other's burdens. Galatians 6, 2. Restoring each other. Galatians 6, 1. Praying for one another. Romans 15, 30. Teaching and admonishing each other. Colossians 3, 16. Refreshing one another. Romans 15, 32. Encouraging each other. Romans 1, 12. Forgiving each other. Ephesians 4, 32. Confessing your needs and your hurts and your sins to one another. James 5, 16. Being truthful with one another. Ephesians 4, 25. So why don't you go over those passages and look them up, underline them perhaps in your Bible. And here's the question for you to think about from today's talk. And this this. How are your relationships with other people that are followers of Jesus? Are they healthy? Uh, are they uh, functioning properly? Or are some of them kind of wacky? Jesus says, get them right, be one, get those relationships the way they ought to be, because how people outside in the world every day where we are who don't know him, they're going to see Jesus and want to know more about him if they see you in your right relationships with other believers. You think about that.